I made a trip up to Auckland yesterday to do a little bit of shopping at a place called New Zealand Fiberglass uh, Supplies or something. Oh, sorry, I can't remember. <laughs> Forgot the exact name, but I'll put it on the screen here for you. And I kind of went berserk and I bought basically everything I need to try some vacuum bagging. So that's what I'm about to do here. I've just got this little test piece. It's kind of a kind of an airfoilish shape there and very small bag. Um, sealant tape. So what did we get? A bunch of things here. That's the vacuum bag, some breather stuff, bit of tape, uh, release film. Uh, this is just a bit of plain weave tape that the guy threw in because I asked if they had carbon tow and they, they don't have any. It seems to be hard to find here in New Zealand for some, for some reason. But he just gave me this and you can just unravel it to get the, uh, the tow out like that. Uh, some quite heavy 400 gram double bias tape which I'll probably use sparingly of course. This is, not, this is a bit heavy for planes but it'll be alright for reinforcement in some strategic spots I think. Found some carbon, uh, sorry, no, Kevlar and thankfully you don't need to buy this in the, the meter sizing, like one square meter or anything, because it's quite expensive. Um, but this is perfect. Uh, so this is what, about six, six or eight centimeters wide tape. So that's just what you need for making hinges. I've uh, got some more peel ply, some 76 gram glass, and some of this stuff which they're calling Dynel or Dynel. Not really sure what I'm going to do with this. I just sort of bought it because I was up there and... Um, I'll play around with it and what can you do with that stuff? I looked around on the net and there wasn't a whole lot of information about it. It seems to be more commonly used for boats but um, if you know what I could do with that for planes that might be useful, let me know. Uh, so to pull a vacuum I've just got this little hand pump thing here. I searched on Google for hand vacuum pump and this came up. It's one of those online retail places that sell like thousands of things really cheaply and a lot of them are kind of crap but I thought I'll, I'll take a chance on it and it turns out that it's actually at least at this point I haven't really used it much but it uh, seems to be quite good it's all metallic here and this is metallic and everything comes with a bunch of these little fittings and some hose and I think it's intended for bleeding the brakes on your car or whatever so it's got this little reservoir as well um, so I think for my projects, at least for now, while I'm just sort of starting out, that will be good enough. This method of attaching the glass like I've just done here by painting the resin down first works quite well but really only if you're adding the first layer. Uh, if you want to put more layers on top of it then well you might as well have done it by just putting the resin on afterwards. Um, but I've, this is what I've been doing and it works quite well because I've got almost the perfect amount of resin on here. Um, I really don't need to vacuum bag this. I would just sort of touch it carefully here and if there's some dry spots you can get a an almost dry brush and just sort of uh, stab it like that and then I'm quite surprised at how versatile these brushes are actually you can remove resin or add resin um, do whatever you like but just don't uh, pull it sideways too much uh, so anyway this <laughs> as it turns out there's no point to vacuum bagging this I don't think I mean I would just press it down a little bit more like that in these spots where I can see it's a little bit dry but otherwise that should be good to go so this might not have been the best example to try vacuum bagging with <laughs> um, maybe I should put another piece on it perhaps ah no, that's alright but what I, what I could do just to make this a bit more of a test is to slap on some more resin and um, make it you know give it something to to pull off so we can see if the vacuum was actually doing anything useful. Oh, now it looks really ugly. Let's put some on the leading edge here as well. 
So I'm going to put this on so that it's sort of not quite covering everything up because I want to see the difference in how well it works between when it's on here by itself like this and when it's um, when the release film is together with it and on that side we're just going to have peel ply and on this side we are going to does this have a side to it? This way is a bit better. And over here we're going to have like one third just this stuff. Like that. Oops, don't touch it. Oh look, it's coming out the holes there already. So perhaps that might work a little bit better than I thought. Put a piece of this on and I'm hoping that just one piece of this will be enough. And I'm also hoping that I'm not going to get resin all over my hands when I pull this off like this. So that's going to go in there like that. <laughs> I, bet, I bet the pros are going to be laughing if I'm doing something wrong here, but um, hopefully not. This um, sealant tape here I discovered, oops, where are we, yeah, uh, it doesn't feel very sticky, like only about maybe a quarter as sticky as normal sellotape, but when it gets on this vacuum bag material, by god it sticks well, oh shit, oh, oh that's, that's okay. <laughs> Alright, so my idea for this was just to use uh, this hard plastic bit in there so that it doesn't get completely crushed here and then put a little bit of this say here and a little bit say here expose that and then uh, stick that on and I think you kind of need some stuff around it so that it doesn't it's not able to completely crush down around that area so that's going to be this alright what does this do? oh it's going a bit slower than I thought I've just discovered one disadvantage with this hand pump method you only have one hand free to like sort of smooth out where the bag is going to go. For this piece it's fine but on some other jobs it might not be. Okay so something's leaking there. There's, there's still a massive hole somewhere. I can't even figure out where it is. Hmm. Alright, so I'm learning a lesson here. You've got to be quite careful when you put that tape on. Probably a little bit more careful than I was being. I was just sort of trusting the, the chewing gum nature of it to kindly fill up any gaps for me, but maybe it's not quite so cooperative. Alright, so at this point the, the seal here somewhere is a bit of a failure. I'll have to work on that a little bit more off camera and figure out where it's leaking. Um, but you can see just from the little bit that I have managed to seal it sort of seems to seal if I push, press down on there <laughs> um, But you can see that some resin is coming through the perforations in that release film there Okay, it looks like the seal on my bag over here was actually okay. The problem is that this pump um, If I pump it or vacuum it and then I hold it in the open position or the squeezed squeeze posi position there with my hand, it's fine It's when you let it go back to the that point there that it loses the seal. Um, I actually knew about this. I was playing around with this pump yesterday and discovered that already, but I kind of forgot about it. Oh, and a little bit of a mistake I made here. This bunch of breather cloth here that I put around the, the nozzle there, it should actually go all the way through to this other breather cloth. Otherwise, there might form a seal in this point right in the middle of the screen where it's pink there. And... Um, the, the air might might 
seems pretty unlikely but the air might not be able to get through that bit there so that's something to keep in mind next time oh shit <laughs> oh look at this I didn't realize on the back of it here the breather cloth wasn't actually covering that bit there uh, so this I guess will give us a little bit of a test to see how well or how poorly the resin sticks to this um, vacuum bagging film. I was kind of curious about that, so I was, I was thinking I might test that sometime anyway, so I guess I've just done it involuntarily. Okay, should be good to go now. The uh, simple solution is just to put a zip tie on there to hold that closed. And it's managing to hold about 450 millibar negative, of course. Um, but if you wanted to use that for something else while you're waiting, uh, I mean, while well, this was curing, uh, you'd probably want to do this, and that's that's what I'll probably be doing quite often in the future. But anyway, for now, it seems to be just fine. Okay, it's about 24 hours later now, and the resin is pretty well hard. Um, I found out that there was actually still a slight leak in this system here, even though I had it closed like that. So what I did was every few hours, i just come out and give it a bit of a pump. And then when I left it overnight, it's gone from 500 down to 300. So it seemed like as the resin hardened, it actually became easier for it to keep the same level of vacuum, probably because the resin was actually uh, sticking the bag down to it already, so it didn't need so much pressure from the atmosphere to do it. Anyway, um, I've noticed that the breather cloth that I put on is probably a little bit thin, because for one thing, when these splotches come out and touch each other, it hasn't really happened much here, but if they cover this area completely then you don't really have any passage of air able to get through so that's not very good and the other thing is that when you have a curved surface like this you want to have as much as possible a very nice soft and even pressure pr pressing down on it and I didn't I don't think I've really got that here because I only have one quite thin layer of this stuff it's very quite thin so I definitely will be using more than one layer on pieces in the future, especially stuff that I'm interested in getting a nice uh, finish. Okay, so the resin doesn't really stick to this stuff much. That's nice. Well, that could be handy. Although, yeah, it, is, it has come through, but it didn't stick to the vacuum bag. I thought this would be a little bit stickier to the to the resin than that. Oh, that's good to know. Could be very handy. Now, <laughs> wow, it's super smooth. Wow, super smooth. Huh? Well, what do you know? That's exactly what I want. So this is the bit that I unintentionally left uncovered from the breather cloth. Huh. Very interesting. Yeah. So, oh, that's not good. Alright, so the breather cloth <laughs> is completely stuck to the peel ply. Oh no, here we go. Uh, yeah, it is kind of stuck. I mean, you can't really get it off. So you're just left with this fluff coming off. Alright, what about where we have the release film? Okay, much better. And we've got these little dots here. Not much though. Huh. Just a slight height difference there. Can you see that? Yep, you can see that. Interesting. So this is just the glass and and this release film only. Oh wow, and that's really good. You don't I don't think you need the peel ply. Hopefully you can see the sort of a finish that we've got there. We've got these little bumps on here, but it's not bad. And if anything, for the final surface of a, like a plane, 
this is probably a lot better than what I'm going to get when I peel the peel ply off here because this is all going to be sort of ridged and uh, it's going to have this cross hatched finish on it like that see if we hopefully we can see this in the camera I'm having trouble seeing what's on the camera there because it's upside down for me when I'm looking at it here but hopefully you can see that so I think the idea is that if you wanted to stick if you wanted to further glue something to here you're better off having a peel ply so that it's a little bit sort of rough and the next layer of glass or whatever you put on there is going to have something to stick to whereas if you intended this to be the final finished surface I'm thinking I might just go with this <clears throat> some of this stuff oh look at that I could totally use this again too oh, there's a few rips if I had have pulled it off a little bit caref a little bit more carefully just now these rips here would not have happened I think or maybe they would have but still yeah that's interesting I could probably use this again like it doesn't have any of the resin stuck to it anywhere unlike the peel ply which the peel ply when you take it off now it's not the same as it was to begin with because it's it's kind of more rigid feeling and you can hear it's sort of a plasticky sound to it so you can't use this again because it's soaked up the resin that came out of there wow gotta say I like this I really like this finish here anyway what does the leading edge look like yeah so it's a bit sharp that's uh it's kind of what I was worried about with not not having enough breather cloth in there I think probably could have done a lot better than that but since it's a nice convex surface we can probably just sand it off a little bit it's only resin in here hopefully it's not glass or anything so just sanding it off is not going to weaken the, the structure I would imagine anyway let's get this off Ugh. now one of the other things I was sort of concerned about was what's going to happen at the edges because these edges are all going to fold fold over and you might not want that in this case I don't care obviously but now we've epoxied this piece of glass to the edge here so presumably if you didn't want to do that you'd have to put something on the surface ahead of time um, I'm thinking just some packing tape or something even stick it on there on this flat end I mean and that would hopefully stop the resin from sticking the glass to the end see it's got stuck on there pretty good too on the other hand if you wanted it to do that it's a really nice fit it's just pulled the glass down perfectly over there like that a little bit of a wrinkle there but the rest of it looks nice then the trailing edge has joined up perfectly with the other side well, that's quite nice if you were just to get your scissors and trim that off it would be a nice sharp trailing edge here's what the breather cloth looks like after that even though I didn't have the best equipment I'm, I'm quite impressed at how much resin it did manage to remove basically all of the extra that I put on just to make a point and probably even a little bit more as well okay I tidied it up a bit the trailing edge turned out really really nice and I just thought I'd show you a little bit at the desk here in case it wasn't clear you sort of have to get the light right to see exactly what the finish or the surface looks like and unfortunately it doesn't want to focus so I'm gonna to have to keep my fingers covering half of the view here to keep <laughs> hold the focus there properly but uh, the shiny bit there was where the perforated film only was on there and I really really like this I was a little bit worried that these perforations where the holes are might become like nasty little vertical spikes sticking out of the surface but they didn't they're just a little bit sticking up like um, like braille I guess you could say you can just sort of barely feel them when you move your finger across it and the surface feels nice and strong and it doesn't really seem to be too heavy either um, this bit here which is even harder to focus on this is where the uh, 
peel plate and the perforated film were together and that's obviously good if you want to glue something on again and this section here which was peel plate only I discovered when I bent this a little bit I think it's here we go if I bend this a little bit hopefully it's gonna focus for me still but there's a little bit there at the end that's not stuck on you can see it sort of wrinkling up so I think I'm not exactly sure why that would happen um, but it seems to be only on the section where there was only peel ply this this bit here that last third uh, didn't do it on this side so it's not really a consistent problem by the looks of it just this side here so I won't be doing that in the future but I may well be doing this quite a bit if I can get it to work consistently as well as it seems to have worked here it's kind of a harder surface too it feels like anyway I think I've talked about this in more than enough detail now so I'll just finish up here and I realize that for those people who are experienced that this kind of thing this video is probably a little bit painful to watch but for those who are not and you're just curious or maybe even thinking about trying some of this and wondering from a newbie's point of view what you're getting into hopefully this video was kinda helpful in any case thanks for watching and I'll see you next time